Hi everybody, welcome back to Daily Dose at Home. My name is Lauren and I'm part of the Visitor Engagement Department here at the Calgary Zoo. Today we've been learning more about the critically endangered mountain bongo in the Iburu Forest Reserve of Kenya. Now, mountain bongo, like many species, depend on their habitat for survival. Their habitat provides everything they need, their food, their water, and their shelter. And for every animal on our planet, the amount of habitat and the amount of range they need depends on how far they have to go to get their basic needs met. It's the same for our animals here in Canada. And uh, animals around the world are using those habitats every day. But humans, we use wild spaces too. We use them to live in for recreation, for agriculture, for forestry. And those human needs are often in a little bit opposition to what animals need. So how do we make sure as a conservation organization doing work with these incredible species, how do we make sure that we're doing what's best for wildlife while recognizing the needs of people? And we can actually look at some of the things we've learned here in Canada to help us protect species here at home and all around the world. In our mountain parks here in Canada, there are species like cougars, wolves, bear, elk, deer, and they coexist along with us. One of the biggest threats to our Canadian species are our roads and highways and trains. So what have we learned about how to protect those species here in Canada? Well, there's something that helps a lot and it's a fence. Fences actually make great neighbors between wildlife and humans because they hold space for wildlife as well as holding space for human activities. We, by creating that fencing, that separation, we ensure that wildlife aren't hit on highways or by trains. We hold that space specifically for them to be able to carry out their wild activities. And these are things that can help protect mountain bongo as well. One of our partners in Kenya, Rhino Ark, is working to protect critical habitat for rhinos, elephants, and other species, including the critically endangered mountain bongo, through fencing. They have fenced over 400 kilometers in the Aberdares National Park, and have also fenced in the Iburu Forest Reserve, which is the habitat for mountain bongo, where we are working with our partners to do our community conservation activities like camera trapping. In the future, Rhino Arc also hopes to finish the fence around Mount Kenya National Park, which will be 450 kilometers of fence. They are also working with communities to build wildlife corridors, which are ways for wildlife to continue being able to access everything they need, similar to the wildlife over and underpasses we see here in Canada in Banff National Park. So this forest or this fence uh, that's protecting the forest, it is an electric fence uh, and they do that so that people who are conducting activities like agriculture uh, actually don't have the animals coming into those croplands either. We don't want to have this human wildlife conflict. We prevent humans from going into the wild preserves and hold that space for wildlife as well as protect the croplands. So this is a way that we can work together with communities alongside wildlife to do what's best for both. And we can actually do that here in Canada in our own homes as well. Today I challenge you to try to create some space for wildlife in your neighborhood or in your yard if you have one. There's a few different ways we can do this. We can plant pollinator friendly plants to encourage habitat space, space for those amazing insects like butterflies and bumblebees. We can go out in our neighborhoods and we can pick up garbage and hold that wild space in our areas for the deer and rabbits and squirrels that live there. We can also leave out nesting materials like my colleague Laura talked about, twigs and sticks uh, for birds to make nests. So today and this spring I challenge you, can you find some space to hold for wildlife or create a little bit of habitat? When we all work together, we can do what's best for both people and animals. It doesn't have to be one or the other because we are all part of an ecosystem. We are all part of a community. And speaking of community, you are part of our Calgary Zoo community. We thank you so much for everything you're doing to support our charitable organization during this time. Thank you for allowing us to continue to do the amazing conservation work that we do here in Canada and around the world, as well as taking care of all of the animal ambassadors here at the Calgary Zoo. We hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and thank you for watching Daily Dose at Home.